Hello. Today, I'm going to read Junie B. Jones and a Little Monkey Business. Written by Barbara Park. My name is Junie B. Jones. The B stands for Beatrice, except I don't like Beatrice. I just like B, and that's all. B stands for something else, too. B stands for baby. B-A-B-Y. I'm only in kindergarten, but I already know how to spell baby. That's because my mother told me that she's going to have one of those things. She and Daddy told me about it at dinner one night. It was the night we had stewed tomatoes, which I hate very much. Daddy and I have a surprise for you, Junie B, had said Mother. And so I got very happy inside because maybe I didn't have to eat my stewy pewy potato tomatoes and also sometimes a surprise means a present and presents are my very favorite things in the whole world I bounced up and down in my chair what is it is it all wrapped up I don't see it I said very excited then I looked under the table because maybe the surprise was hiding down there with a red ribbon on top of it my and daddy smiled at each other my mother held my hand Junie B, how would you like to have a little baby brother or sister, she said. I'd name my shoulders go up and down. I don't know, maybe, I told her. Then I looked under my chair. Guess what, I said. I can't find that silly willy present anywhere. Mother made me sit up. Then she and my daddy said some more stuff about a baby. The baby will be yours too, Junie B, daddy said. Just think, you'll have your very own little brother or sister to play with. Won't that be fun? I did my shoulders up and down again. I don't know, maybe, I said. Then I got down from my chair and ran into the living room. Bad news, fellas, I hollered very loud. The present it isn't in this dumb bunny room either. Mother and Daddy came into the living room. They didn't look that smiley anymore. Daddy took a big breath. There is no present, Junie B, he said. We never said we had a present. We said we had a surprise, remember? And Mother sat down next to me. The surprise is, I'm going to have a baby, Junie B. In a few months, you're going to have a little baby brother or sister. Do you get what I'm saying yet? Just then I folded my arms and made a grumpy face, because all of a sudden I got it. That's why. You didn't get me a darn thing, did you? I said very growly. Mother looked angry at me. I give up, she said, and went back in the kitchen. Daddy said I owe her apology. Apologies when you have to say the words, I'm sorry. Yes, she owes me apology too, I said, because a baby isn't a very good surprise. I made a wrinkly nose. Babies smell like P.U., I explained. I smelled one at my friend Grace's house. It had some spit up on its front, and so I held my nose and hollered, P.U., what a stink bomb. And then that Grace made me go home. After I finished my story, Daddy went into the kitchen to talk to Mother. Then Mother called me in there, and she said, If the baby smells like a stink bomb, she will buy me my very own air freshener. And I can spray the can all by myself. Except not on the P.U. baby. I would like the one that smells as fresh as Carolina Pine Forest, I said. Then me and Mother hugged, and I sat back down at the table, and I finished eating my dinner, except not my stewy, pewy tomatoes. And so guess what? No dessert, that's why. Chapter 2 The Dumb Baby's Room <clears throat> Mother and Daddy fixed up a room for the new baby. It's called a nursery, except I don't know why, because baby isn't a nurse, of course. Baby's room used to be the guest room. That's where all our guests used to sleep, only we never had much guests. So now if we get some, we'll have they'll have to sleep on a table or somewhere. Baby's room has new stuff in it. That's because mother and daddy went shopping at the new baby stuff store. They bought a new baby dresser with green and yellow knobs on it and a new baby lamp with a giraffe on the lampshade. And also a new rocking chair for when the baby cries and you can't shut it up. And there's a new baby crib, too. 
The crib is a bed with bars on the side of it. It's kind of like a cage at the zoo. Except with a crib, you can put your hand through the bars, and the baby won't pull you in and kill you. And guess what else is in the nursery? Wallpaper, that's right. The jungle kind. With pictures of elephants and lions and a big fat hip of pot of something. And there's monkeys too, which are my most favorite jungle guys in the whole world. Mother and daddy pasted on the wallpaper together. Me and my dog Tickle are watching them. This wallpaper looks very cute in here, I told him. I would like some of it in my room too, I think. Okay? I said, can I? Can I? We'll see, said Daddy. We'll see is another word for no. Yeah, only that's not fair, I said, because the baby gets all new junk and I have all old junk. Poor Judy B, said Mother, very teasing. Then she bended down and tried to hug me, only she couldn't do it very good because of her big fat stomach, which is where the stupid baby is. I don't think I'm going to like this dumb baby, I said. Mother stopped hugging me. Don't say that, Junie B. Of course you will, she said. Of course I won't, I talked back, because I won't even, it won't even let me hug you very good. And anyway, I don't even know a stupid dumb name. Then Mother sat down on the new rocking chair. And she tried to put me on her lap, only I wouldn't fit, so she just holded my hand. That's because Daddy and I haven't picked a name for the baby yet, she explained. We want a name that's a little bit different. You know, something cute like Junie B. Jones, a name that people would, would remember. So I thought and thought very hard. And I clapped my hands together real loud. Hey, I know one. I said very excited. It's the cafeteria lady at my school, and her name is Mrs. Guzman. Mother frowned a little bit, so maybe she didn't hear me, I think. Mrs. Guzman, I hollered. That's a cute name, don't you think? And I remembered it, too. Even after I only heard it one time, Mrs. Guzman sticked right out in my head. Mother took a deep breath. Yes, honey. But I'm not sure that Mrs. Gutsman is a good name for a tiny baby. So then I scrunched my face up and thought, and thought all over again, how about Teeny? I said, Teeny would be good. Mother smiled. Well, Teeny might be cute while the baby's little, but what would we call him when he grows up? Big Teeny, I cried out very happily. And Mother said, we'll see, which means no big Teeny. After that, I didn't feel so happy anymore. When's this dumb bunny baby getting here anyway, I said. Mother frowned again. The baby is not a dumb bunny, Junie B, and it will be here very soon. So I think you'd better start getting used to the idea. Then her and Mommy began pasting wallpaper again. And so I opened the new baby dresser with the green and yellow knobs, and I looked at the new baby clothes. The baby pajamas were very weensy, and the baby socks wouldn't even fit on my big piggy toe. I'm going to be the boss of this baby, I said to Tickle, because I'm the biggest, that's why. Baby's Daddy snapped his finger at me. That's enough of that kind of talk, Missy, he said. Missy's my name when I'm in trouble. After that, him and Mother went to the kitchen to get some more paste. So I looked down the hall to make sure he was gone. Yeah, only I'm still going to be the boss of it, I whispered. Ha ha, so there. Chapter 3 A Very Wonderful Thing Yesterday, a very wonderful thing happened. It's called, I had pie for dinner. Just pie and that's all. That's because my mother went to the hospital to have the baby, and Daddy and Grandma Miller went with her. And so me and my grandpa got to stay at the house, at his house, all by ourselves, and no one even babysitted us. And guess what? Grandpa smoked a real live cigar right inside the house, and Grandma didn't yell, Go outside with that thing, Frank! After that, my grandpa gave me a piggyback ride, and he let me put on Grandma Miller's new hat, 
with the long brown feather. And also, I got to walk in her red high heels. Only then I fell down in the kitchen, and so I quit to come off. Hey, I could crack my head open with these dumb things, I said very loud. After that, I opened the refrigerator, because I was hungry from playing, that's why. Hey, guess what? There's a big, fat lemon pie in here, Frank, I hollered. And so then Grandpa Miller got down two plates, and then me and him ate the big, fat lemon pie for dessert. Just pie, that's all. And we're not even going to get in trouble, because we're going to tell Grandma that her cat ate it. There's another th very funny thing. I got to sleep on Grandpa Miller's guest room. First I put on my PJs with the feet in them, and then my Grandpa watched me brush my new front tooth, and he tucked me into the big guest bed. Sweet dreams, June B., he said, except for then I got a little bit of scared in me. Yeah, only guess what, Grandpa, I said. It's very dark in this big room, and so there might be hidey things in here. Grandpa looked all around the room and also in the closet. Nope, no hidey things in here, he said. After that, he left on the hall light for me, so my imagination wouldn't run wild. Except I still didn't sleep that good, because there was a drooly guy with claws under my bed. So in the morning, my eyes felt very saggy. Only then I sniffed something that woke me right up, and its name was Delicious Waffles. Grandpa Miller cooked them for me, and he let me pour on my own syrup, and he didn't yell, whoa, whoa, whoa. After that, me and him played till it was time for kindergarten. So before I left, the funniest thing of all happened. Grandma Miller came home, and she said that mother had a baby and it was the boy kind. Then me and her and my grandpa all did a giant big hug. And Grandpa Miller picked me up and swinged me in the air. You're just going to love him, Junie B., she said. Your new brother is the cutest little monkey I've ever seen. Then my eyes got very wide. He is, really? I said. Grandma Miller put me down. Then she started talking to my grandpa. Wait till you see him, Frank, she said. He's got the longest little fingers and toes. I tugged on her dress. How long, Grandma? I said, longer than mine? But Grandma just kept on talking. And his hair, Frank. My word, he's got oodles and oodles of thick black hair. I pulled on Grandma's arm. How come, Grandma? How come he's got hair, I asked. I thought little babies were supposed to be baldies. But still, my grandma didn't answer me. And he's big, too, Frank. He's much bigger than any of the other babies in the hospital. And you should feel how tightly he grabs onto your finger when you just then I stamp my foot very hard. Hey, I want some answers down here, Helen. He's my baby, too, you know. Grandma Miller frowned at me because I'm not supposed to call her Helen, I think. Sorry, I said kind of quiet. Then Grandma Miller bended down next to me and so I didn't have to yell anymore. Are you telling me the truth, Grandma? I said, is my brother really the cutest little monkey you ever saw, for really and honest and truly? Then my grandma Miller hugged me very tight. Yes, little girl, she whispered in my ear, for really and honest and truly. After that, she picked me up again, and me and her twirled all around the kitchen. Chapter 4 Hoppy and Russell my room at kindergarten is named Room 9. I have two bestest friends in that place. One of them has the name of Lucille. Lucille, Lucille sits right exactly next to me. She has a red chair and also little red fingernails, which are very glossy. My other bestest friend is named Grace. Me and that Grace sit together on the school bus. Except for not today, we didn't, because today Grandpa Miller drove me. Then he walked to room 9 with me, and he waved at my teacher. Her name is Mrs. She has another name, too, but I just like Mrs., that's all. When I first walked into my room, Lucille was looking at that Grace's brand new shoes. And their name was Pink High Tops. 
Hey, Grace, those new shoes look very beautiful on you, I said. But that dumb Grace didn't even say thank you to me. Grace is angry at you, said Lucille. She said that she rode the bus today, and you weren't even there to save her a seat. And she had to sit next to an icky kid. Are you Grace? Grace, popped your head up and down. Yes, only I couldn't help it, Grace. That's because I stayed at my Grandpa Miller's last night, and there's no bus that comes to that place. So he had to drive me here today. And I tried to hold out, hold that Grace's hand, only she quit pull it away. That's not very nice of you, Grace, I said. And so guess what? Now I'm not going to tell you my secret. That's when Grace stuck, called me a poopy head. Lucia held my hand. I don't think you're a poopy head, Jimmy B, she said. And so you can tell me your special secret, and I won't tell anybody, not even Grace. That's when Grace kicked Lucille in the leg. And so Lucille pushed her down, and Mrs. had to come and pull them off each other. I raised my hand very polite. I wasn't involved, I said to Mrs. After that, we had to sit down to do some work. I was, it was called printing our numbers, only I couldn't do mine that good, because Lucille kept on talking to me, that's why. Come on, Jeannie B., she said in her whispering voice, tell me your special secret. I won't tell, I promise. Yes, only I can't, Lucille. There's no talking to your neighbor, remember? Then Mrs. snapped her fingers at me. See, Lucille, I told you no talking to your neighbor, I hollered. Now I got snapped at. Just then a boy named Jim, Jim said shush to me. Shush yourself, you big fat Jim, I said back. After that, Mrs. stood next to me till I finished my work. Then I got all done and she collected it. That made me happy inside because guess what comes after work? Something very fun, that's what. And it's show and tell. Mrs. stood next to her desk. Who has something interesting to share with the class today, she said. Then my heart got very pumpy, because I had the most special secret in the whole wide world. I raised my hand way high in the air. Ooh, ooh, I howled real loud. Me, me, me. Mrs. shook her head at me, because I'm not supposed to go ooh, 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 me, me, me. She called on William. He's a crybaby boy in my class. I can beat him up, I think. William, said Mrs. Since you raised your hand so politely, you may go first. And so, when William carried a paper bag to the front of the room, he took out a jar with two dead crickets. Except for William didn't know they were dead. He thought they were just sleeping. Jump, Hoppy. Jump, Russell, said William. And he tapped on the glass. Hey, wake up in there, he said. After that, William started shaking the jar all over the place. And he wouldn't stop. Wake up, I said, he shouted. Then Hoppy and Russell started falling all apart, and Mrs. had to take the jar away. That's when William started to cry, and he had to go to the nurse's office to lie down. So then I raised my hand way high in the air, and guess what? My show and tell was way better than two dead crickets. Mrs. called my name. Junie B., would you like to go next, she asked. Then I jumped right up and I ran speedy fast to the front of the room. Guess what? I said very excited. Last night, my mother had a baby, and it's the boy kind. Mrs. clapped her hands. Junie B. has a new little brother, everyone, she said. Isn't that wonderful? Then all of room nine clapped, too. Yes, only you haven't heard the bestest part yet, I said very loud. Because, guess what else? He's a monkey. That's what else. My new brother is a real, alive baby monkey. Mrs. got a funny look on her face, and she squinted her eyes very tiny. And so maybe she didn't hear me or something, I think. <coughs> I said, I've got a monkey brother. I shouted real louder. <clears throat> then that mean Jim jumped right up from his desk, and he hollered, Liar, liar, pants on fire. No, they're not on fire, you big fat Jim, I said back. I do, too, have a monkey brother. You can ask my Grandma Miller if you don't believe me. <clears throat> Mrs. raised her eyebrows way high on her head. Your grandmother told you that your brother is a monkey? 
he asked me. Yes, I said. She told me he has long fingers and long toes and lots of black fur all over himself. After that, Mrs. kept on looking and looking at me. Then she said it was time for me to sit down. Yeah, only I'm not done telling the children about my monkey brother yet, I explained. Because guess what else? His wallpaper has pictures of his jungle friends on it. And his bed has bars on the side, but I'm going to teach him how not to bite or kill people. Then this boy named Ricardo, who has cute freckles on his face, said, Monkeys are cool to me. I know they're cool, Ricardo, I said. And guess what else? Maybe I can bring him to school on pet day. Then Ricardo smiled at me. And so he might be my boyfriend, I think. Except for there's a boy and roommate who already loves me. Just then, Mrs. stood up and pointed at me. That's enough, Junie B., she said. I want you to sit down now. You and I will talk about this monkey business later. Well, that made me giggle, because monkey business is a funny word, I think. Then I waved goodbye to my new boyfriend, Ricardo, and I skipped back to my seat. <coughs> Chapter 6 Bestest Friends Recess is my best subject. I learned it my first week of school. Recess is when you go outside and you run off your steam. Then when you come in, you can sit still better, and I don't have ants, and you don't have ants in your pants. At recess, me and Lucille and that Grace play horses together. I'm brownie, Lucille's blacky, and that Grace is yellowy. I'm brownie, I hollered as soon as I got outside. I don't want to play horses today, said Lucille. I want to know some more about your monkey brother. Me too, said that Grace. Then Lucille pushed that Grace out of the way. She whispered a secret in my ear. If you let me tell, if you let me be the first one to see him, I'll let you wear my new locket, she said. Yeah, only guess what, Lucille, I said. I don't even know what a dumb locket is. So then Lucille showed me her locket. It was a little gold heart on a chain. Isn't it beauteous, she said. My Nana gave it to me for my birthday. Then she opened up the little heart, and there was a little bitty picture inside of it, that thing. Hey, there's a teeny head in here, I said very excitedly. I know, that's my mama, said Lucille. See her? I squinted very hard at the little picture. Your Nana is a shrimpy, Lucille, I said. After that, Lucille closed the locket. She gave it to me. Now I'm your best friend, right, Junie B? She said. And so I can be the first one to see your monkey brother. Just then, Grace stopped her foot very hard. No, you cannot, Lucille, she hollered. I'm her best friend, because me and her ride the bus together. And so I get to see your monkey brother first. Right, Junie B? Right? I made my shoulders go up and down. I don't know, Grace, because Lucille just gave me this locket and with, with the teeny Nana. And <clears throat> so that means she gets to go first, I think. That Grace stomped her foot again. She made a mad face at me. Hooey, she said. Except for just then, I got a great idea. Hey, guess what, Grace? I said, very excited. Since you, Lucille gave me something beautiful, now you can give me something beautiful, too. And so that would be very fair of me, I think. Then that Grace started smiling. She took off her sparkly new ring. Here, she said, I got it out of a cereal this morning. See how shiny the stone is? That's because it's a real genuine face, fake plastic diamond. Then she put some breath on it, and she shined it on her sleeve for me. Ooh, I love this thing, Grace. I know, she said. And so now I get to see your monkey brother first, right, Junie B., right? After that, I had to think of it. Yeah, only here's the trouble, Grace, I said. Now I have one thing from you and one thing from Lucille, so it's a tie. Then Lucille quickly took off her red sweater with the Scotty dog on it, and she tied it around my waist. Here, she said, now I've given you two things, and I'm still the winner. No, you're not, hard that, Grace, because I'm going to give Junie B my snack ticket for today, and so she can have my cookie and milk. Excellent idea, Grace, I said, and me and her did a high five.
Oh yeah, said Lucille. Well then I'm going to give her my snack ticket too, and so I'm still a winner. After that, Grace looked all over herself. But that's not fair, she said, because I don't have anything else to give her. So I looked all over her too, and then I jumped up and down again. Yes, you do, Grace, I said. You do too have something else to give me, and their name is your new pink high tops. Gracie stared at her feet. She looked very sad. Yeah, only this is the first time I ever wore these, she said real quiet. So I patted her so she would feel better. I know, Grace, I explained nicely, but if you don't give them to me, then you won't be able to see my monkey brother. So then me and that Grace sat down on the grass as she took off her new pink shoes and she gave them to me. Thank you, Grace, I said politely. Then I stood up. Okay, your turn, I said to Lucia. Only too bad for me, because just then the stupid bell rang. Chapter 7 Some School Words <clears throat> I wore my brand new things back to room 9. They looked very, very beautiful on me, except my new high top, pink high tops were too big, and my feet were sliding around in there. Four sat down and looked at Lucille's red chair, then I tapped on it. I'm sorry, Lucille, I said, but red is my favorite color, and so I would like that chair of yours, I think. Lucille looked very upset at me, but red is my favorite color too, Junie B. I patted her. I know, Lucille. I said nicely, but you still must give it to me. It's the rules. And so she did. Now I'm the winner for sure, aren't I? She asked. I made my shoulders go up and down. I don't know, Lucille. That Grace said she might have some cash in her purse. After that, Mrs. Paid out construction, passed out construction paper, and we cut out autumn leaves for our bulletin board. Autumn is the school word for fall. We sprinkled our leaves with shiny glitter. I also sprinkled glitter in my hair and I pasted some to my eyebrows. Then Mrs. Confiscated my shiny glitter jar. Confiscated is a school word for yanked it right out of my hand. Just then Mrs. Guzman knocked on our door. And she came in the room with our milk and cookies. Hooray, hooray for Mrs. Guzman, I shouted at her. Guess what, Mrs. Guzman? I get three snacks today. See, I have three snack tickets. Mrs. walked over to my chair. She stared down at me. How did you get two extra tickets, Janie B., Junie B.? Did you find them on the playground? Then she took my two extra tickets away, and she held them way high in the air. Did anyone lose their snack tickets today, she said to class. No, those are my tickets. Lucille and Grace gave them to me. She raised her eyebrows. Lucille, did you give Junie B your snack ticket today, she asked. Yes, said Lucille. That's because she made me. No, I did not, you dumb Lucille, I said. I did not make you. Mrs. said, be quiet to me. She folded her arms. Grace, did you give your snack ticket to Junie B too? Then, then that Grace started to cry because she thought she was in trouble. Mrs. tapped her foot. Please come and get your snack ticket, Grace, she said. And so then that Grace walked to my table in just her socks. And Mrs. made squinty eyes at her feet. Where are your shoes, Grace? she asked. That's when big fat baby Grace started crying very harder. And she pointed at her shoes. Mrs. peeped under my table. Junie B. Jones, she hollered. Why are you wearing Grace's shoes? Mrs. sounded dangerous. Because, I said, kind of good. Because why, said Mrs. Because it's the rules, I explained. Then Mrs. bended down very close to my ear. What rules? The rules who, for who gets to be the first one to see my monkey brother. Mrs. rolled her eyes way back in her head. Put your own shoes back on and come with me, young lady. Then me and her walked into the hall together, and she made me tell her what happened on the playground. After that, I had to give Lucille back the locket and the sweater with the Scotty dog on it, and I had to give back Grace back the real genuine fake ring from the cereal box. Then Mrs. wrote a note, and she said for me to take it to the principal. 
the offices where take it to the office. The office is where the boss of the school lives. His name is Principal. Yes, but I don't think I would like to go down there today, I said, or else my mother might get mad at me. Mrs. Tapterfoot. Then she took hold of my hand. Let's go, young lady. March, she said. And so then me and her marched to the office. March is a school word for pulled me way too fast. Chapter 8, Me and Principal The school office is a scary place. It has loud ringing phones and a typing lady who is a stranger, and a row of chairs where the bad kids sit. Mrs. plopped me in a blue one. Wait here, she said. Yeah, only I'm not bad, I whispered just to myself. Then I put my sweater on my head so nobody would see me in the bad kids chair. After that, I peeked down my long sweater sleeve, and I saw Mrs. out of my handhold. She was knocking on the principal's door. Then she went in, and my heart felt very pumpy, because she was tattletaling on me, I think. After a while, she came out. The principal came with her. The principal has a baldy head, which looks like rubber. He also has big hands and heavy shoes, and a suit made out of black. Could I see you in my office for a minute, Judy B? He said. So then I had to go in there all by myself, and I sat in the big wood chair, and the principal made me take the sweater off my head. So what's this all about, he said. Why do you think your teacher brought you down here today? Because, I said very quiet. Because why, said the principal. Because that gray shot off her big fat mouth, I explained. Then the principal folded his arms and said for me to start at the beginning, and so I did. First I told him how I spended the night at my grandpa's house. We had delicious waffles for breakfast, I said. I had five of them, when my grandpa didn't know where I put them all, except I put them way in here. Then I opened my mouth and showed the principal where my waffles went. After that, I told him how Grandma Miller came home from the hospital, and she told me I had a monkey brother, for really and honest and truly. And so then I told the children at show and tell, I said. And at recess, Lucille and that Grace started giving me lots of pretty stuff, because they want to be the first to see him. Except too bad for me, I said, because when we came inside, Mrs. found out about the snack tickets. And then that dumb Grace shot off her big fat mouth by her shoes. And so I got marched down here, and I have to sit in the bad kid's chair. Then I smoothed my skirt. The end, I said nicely. Principal rubbed his head that looks just like rubber. Junie B, maybe we should go back to where your grandmother came home from the hospital. Can you remember exactly what she said about your brother being a monkey? I scrunched my eyes real tight to remember. Yes, I said. Grandma Miller said he was the cutest little monkey she ever saw. Then Principal closed his eyes. Ah, I said kind of quiet. Now I get it. After that, he smiled a little bit. You see, Jeannie B., when your grandmother called your brother a little monkey, she didn't mean he was a real monkey. She just meant he was, well, cute. I know he's cute, I said. That's because all monkeys are cute, except for I don't like the big kind that can kill you. Principal said, shook his head. No, Junie B, that's not what I meant. I mean, your brother isn't really a monkey at all. He's just a baby boy. I made a frowny face. No, he's not a little baby boy, I told him. He's a live, real baby monkey with black, hairy fur and long fingers of toes. You can ask my grandma Miller if you don't believe me. So guess what the principal did then? He called her, that's what. He called Grandma Miller right up on the phone. And then he talked to her. And then I talked to her too. Hey grandma, I said very shouty. Guess what just happened down here? The principal said that my baby brother isn't a real live monkey. Only he is. Because you told me that, remember? You said he was a monkey. A real and honest truth. Then Grandma Miller said she was very sorry, but she didn't mean he was a real monkey, just meant he was cute. 
this like principle explained to me. And then I felt very droopy inside. Yeah, only what about all of his black hair and his long fingers of toes, I said. And what about his bed that looks like a cage? And the wallpaper with his jungle friends on it. But Grandma Miller kept on saying that my new brother was just a regular cute baby. And so finally I didn't want to talk to her anymore and I hanged up the phone. Then I bended my head way down and my eyes got a little bit of wet in them. Darn it. It was a bit After that, Principal gave me a tissue. And he said, I'm sorry to me. And he held my hand. And me and him walked back to room nine. Chapter 9 Pigs and Ducks and Stuff. Principal went into room 9 with me. He clapped his giant hands together. Boys and girls, may I please have your attention? He said, I would like to explain what happened during show and tell today. It's about Junie B. Jones and her new baby brother. Just then, that Jim I hate jumped right up out of his chair. He's not a monkey, is he? He shouted very loudly. I knew it. I knew he wasn't a monkey. I made a big fist at him. How would you like this up your nose, you big dumb Jim, I hollered. And the principal frowned at me. And so I smiled. I hate that guy. I said nicely. After that, principal took a big breath. Boys and girls, there's a good reason why Junie B. told you that her baby brother was a monkey. She, he said. Yeah, it was all my Grandma Miller's fault, I interrupted, because she told me that my brother was a little monkey. Only she didn't mean that he was a real little monkey. She just meant he was cute. Only, who the heck knew that dumb thing? Principal made another frown at me. Then you talked some more. You see, boys and girls, he said, sometimes adults say things that can be very confusing to children. Like, what if you heard me talking about a lucky duck? You might think I was talking about a real live duck. But lucky duck just means a lucky person. Right, said Mrs. And when we call somebody a busy bee, we don't mean he's a real bee, we just mean he's a hard worker. Hey, I just thought of another one, I said, very excited. A dumb bunny isn't a real live bunny either. He's just a plain old dumb guy. Then my friend Lucille raised her hand. I've got one too, she said. Sometimes my Nana calls my daddy a couch potato. Only he's not a real potato. He's just a lazy bum. Yeah, and I'm not a big pig, said my new boyfriend Ricardo. But my mom says I eat like one. After that, a whole bunch of other kids said they eat like big pigs too. Only a boy named Donald said he eats like a horse. And a Crybaby William eats like a bird. Just then it was time for the bell to ring, and so me and Principal said bye-bye to each other, and I went to my seat. Then I gave Lucille back her red chair. She was very nice to me. I'm sorry that your brother isn't a real monkey, Junie B., she said. Thank you, Lucille, I said. I'm sorry that your daddy isn't a real potato, too. After that, the bell rang for us to go home. So me and Lucille and that Grace held hands, and we walked outside together. Only then, a very wonderful thing happened, and it's called, I Heard My Mother's Voice. Junie B, Junie B, over here, honey. Daddy and I are over here. And I looked in the parking lot, and I saw her. And so I run to her speedy quick, and then me and Mother hugged and hugged, because I hadn't seen her for a very whole day. And then my dad... Daddy got out of the car, and he had a little yellow blanket in his arm. And guess what was in that thing? My new baby brother, that's what. He was very teeny and pinkish, except his head had a lot of black hair on it. I touched it. It felt like fuzzy. Just then, Ricardo walked by, and he saw my teeny brother. Cool hair, he said. I smiled very big. I know it, Ricardo, I said. And guess what else? He doesn't even smell like P.U., after that, I got in the car, and I told Mother about Lucille's locket. And she said maybe I could get a locket, too, and I could put my brother's teeny head in there. Yes, I would also like some pink high tops, please, I said very polite. 
Maybe, said Mother. Oh, boy, I said. Because maybe doesn't mean no, that's why. And so then I lifted up the blanket and I peeked at my baby brother one more time. So what do you think of him, Junie B? said Mother. I smiled very big. I think he's the cutest little monkey I ever saw, I said. Then Mother laughed, and I laughed too.